In the previous video, we discussed IC fabrication, and we gave an example of a simple n-channel MOSFET. We showed some of the masking layers that we needed to create this n-channel transistor. Now I want to show you how these mask layers are created. Now I'm in a program called a layout editor. And this allows me to draw the masking layers for the integrated circuit. Over on the right, I have menu options. And I have a window with an array of tick marks. And each grid space is separated by 0.2 microns. And I've noticed that when I do a screen capture, that some of these grid points don't show up. So I don't think that's much of a problem, but let's just make the best of it. So let's grab a masking layer. I'm going to select a use layer command. I'm going to go over here and I'm going to select an active layer and a box. So what we're going to do is we're going to make the transistor. I'm going to draw this active layer Let's draw it about this size. This layer is going to define where the transistor is going to exist. So let me show you how simple it is to draw the n-channel MOSFET transistor. I'm going to need another layer, use layer. I'm going to grab polysilicon layer and make a box. And I'm going to overlap this blue layer with the green layer. Now the blue layer tells me where I want the transistor active layer to be and the green layer is my gate electrode which is called poly or polysilicon. Now I recall from the fabrication video that when the source and drain regions of the transistor are implanted that the poly layer is put down first and let me grab a pointing device so this region here is defined using the poly layer so that when I implant the poly layer this green layer acts as a blocking layer so that my actual diffusion layer ends up in the regions in the blue region that is outside of the green region and the region the green where the green region and the blue region intersect is called the transistor channel let me grab a layer here and make that a little more clear so this region right here is the channel of the transistor let me get rid of that now let's show you where the, for example, the drain region could be here. Let's select new. Let's copy. This other region there could be the source region. Now the source and drain are symmetric, so they're interchangeable. And they're really dependent on voltage levels and things like that. So let me delete these layers. And so this is the basic transistor. We've created a drain channel region and a source region and a gate electrode just by drawing one layer on top of the other. Now notice that the green layer overlaps the blue layer by a certain amount. So I could have drawn this transistor a little differently. Let's move this down here. Now, it still may work as a transistor, but what if there's a little bit of misalignment in the fabrication process? And this green layer misaligns a little bit like this. Okay, well, that doesn't form a valid transistor anymore. This region up here shorts the drain to the source with an active region. It doesn't, there's no channel region here. So it's very important that all the foundry design rules or layout rules not be violated. So let's move this layer back to the proper location. 
and unselect it. Now we need to make connections to this transistor. And to do that, we use the contact layer. Let's grab the contact layer. Let's say that this drain region, we want to contact it to metal that's going to be fabricated later. So we've created a contact region that's rectangular. But a rectangular contact region is more difficult to fabricate. So in a typical CMOS process, we will never draw a rectangular contact. The contact layer always has to be square. So let's get rid of this contact layer and add a correct contact layer. So we'll add a square contact and let's let's also copy that down to here. So we've added two contact regions to this end diffusion drain region. Now we also want to contact the region on the right that I'm calling the source region. And we also want to contact the green gate layer, the polysilicon layer. And to do that, let me unselect that. And I need more polysilicon. So I'm going to add a little box here where we're going to contact the gate electrode. So let's grab a contact layer and let's put our contact there. Now the contact must always have metal on top of it. So the contact always connects the metal above to the silicon layers below. So let's put metal on top of these contacts. So let's use layer. I'm going to grab some metal here. I'm going to make a little metal box. And we'll go over this, let's call it a drain region. And metal will go over to the source contacts. And metal will go over the poly contact. So now we have a basic end channel transistor with three connections, drain, source, and gate. But remember that the MOSFET is really a four-terminal device. There's another connection to the substrate or the surface of the wafer. So let's put in another active region. Let's go next page, grab active. We'll create a little, let's see, over here, we're gonna create a region where we're gonna, where we're gonna contact the surface of the wafer or the substrate, which is the P-type material. Now we need a layer to distinguish the P-type region for this substrate contact from the n-type region that forms the transistor. So let's use layer. I'm going to grab an n-implant layer. I'm going to put that layer over the n-channel transistor. And during fabrication, that'll guarantee that this active region will only be an n-type material. Now I need to use a different masking layer and put that over my substrate contact. And that layer guarantees that this active region will be P-type material. Now I need to add contacts to this substrate tie, so I'm going to steal some contacts, copy over to here. Unselect all. And let me also steal this metal layer and copy that over on top of these contacts. So this is the basic layout of an N-channel MOSFET transistor in a CMOS process. And again, it's very important that I follow all the layout rules. For example, you'll notice that this contact here needs a certain metal overlap. The metal must be bigger than the contact to allow for misalignment or shrinkage of the metal. 
There's certain rules about contact to contact spacing. I cannot space these contacts too close to each other. There's certain rule about the active to active spacing. And there's certain rules about this poly to this active. So all these rules need to be adhered to. And luckily we have software that checks all these rules. And this software is called Design Rule Check or DRC. And we also have software that will check the schematic for this transistor versus the layout for this transistor. And this software is called Layout versus Schematic or LVS. So hopefully this gives you some idea of how to create the masking layers needed for the N-channel MOSFET transistor. Here's for the integrated circuit. Over on the right, I have menu options and I have a window with an array of tick marks in each grid space how these mask layers are created. Now I'm in a program called a layout editor and this allows me to draw the masking layers is separated by 0.2 microns and I've noticed that when I do a screen capture that some of these grid points don't show up. So I don't think that's much of a problem but let's just make of a simple n-channel MOSFET. We showed some of the masking layers that we needed to create this n-channel transistor. Now I want to show you in the previous video we discussed IC fabrication and we gave an example 